everybody. So we're gonna do something a little bit different today. Today we're gonna be making our own crystals. A lot of you guys know me from the unboxing videos. So if you guys really enjoy all of those beautiful specimens that we see on this channel, well, today we're gonna basically make our own. For this video, we're gonna be using borax. It's pretty cheap, it's easy to find. They use it as like a detergent to like get rid of some odors in the house, different things. It's actually really pretty darn useful. We're essentially gonna be creating a cool shape for our crystals to grow on. So I'm gonna try to make a snowflake ornament. We're gonna be taking some 22 gauge wire. I have no idea how this is gonna turn out because I have not ever actually tried to make a snowflake out of wire. I probably should have looked up like a picture of a snowflake that I wanted. <laughs> They're complicated, and I, I might have made a mistake. <laughs> so I've got to make a star with things coming out of the star. Comfort zone <laughs> has been left. Here's kind of my shape. Now, what would you think if you saw that falling out of the sky? Oh no. <laughs> so I kind of want to make the one where like, it's got the branches sticking out from either end. This was super ambitious. <laughs> oh, that didn't work out the way I thought it would. I mean, it's not totally terrible. <laughs> it's not great, but it's not terrible. <laughs> I got a jar. It's obviously not gonna fit. But thankfully I have a bigger vase, just in case. When you're doing these crystals, you've got to remember like you need enough borax to what we call super saturate the solution. So super saturation just basically means you get the water hot and you get a ton of that borax in it and you want to dissolve it until you don't see it dissolving anymore. So you might want to start off with less than what you think and then add it until you see where like after you know a minute of stirring you're still seeing like a little bit in the bottom well you want to leave it alone at that point so as that water cools down it becomes what we call super saturated because at a higher temperature there can actually be more borax in the water as you get lower the solution doesn't want to have as much borax in it so what you're doing is you're giving it an object to actually crystallize onto and take that borax out of the water. This happens with regular crystal growth. So like if you see like really gorgeous like quartz crystals and things like that, this is actually what's going on inside of those cavities. You have a solution that is saturated with all sorts of elements and stuff like that and whatever's like the most stable, it's gonna want to come out of solution and create a solid. So we're essentially taking what happens in nature with like extremely, extremely hot fluids, and we're making it with like almost boiling water and some borax. So I wasn't really prepared to use this big container, so I'm actually gonna go get a stick from outside and use that to tie my thread to so that I can hang my crystal in my borax solution. I got a stick because I needed to use it to go across this. And I've got my stir spoon. The water is really warm. You can see the steam coming out of it, but it's not boiling. For borax crystals, you don't have to have it boiling. Now we're going to add in our borax. And it's gonna look like it's a lot. So now I'm gonna poof, stir in what I've got in there. I'm gonna just see if I've got anything sitting on the bottom. No, it actually looks pretty good. I'm gonna add a little bit. You guys are gonna know pretty quickly whether or not this is actually going to work for you. If you guys leave it sitting out in probably about two or three hours, if you just go and check up on it, you should see like some teeny T9C teeny crystals forming. If you don't see that in the first two or three hours, it means you didn't quite get enough borax in your hot water and you can either choose to throw it out, start over, you can reheat it. It's not a big deal. I'm just gonna, a little dash more. Whoop, that's more than a dash. You know, it's cloudy. Cloudiness is a-okay. What you don't wanna see is like solid little white pieces in there. I mean, I'd be satisfied with that. 
mean, like I said, it's not an exact science. We are ready to rumble and we're ready to just leave it alone. Biggest thing, leave it alone. Because the more you move around the jar and move things around after you're done putting it together, you can actually like keep crystals from growing. But it's really tempting to come up and, you know, pick it up, take it out and all that kind of good stuff. Usually 24 hours is enough. I think I'm just gonna be happy like if it gets like 80% coated. That's a good realistic expectation. So it is about 24 hours later, I mean, which is awesome. Like most crystals that you guys are gonna grow at home don't grow this quickly. That's why I love playing with borax crystals. This is actually better than I was hoping for. I'm super excited that they turned out like really big. I guess I'll go ahead and take it out really slowly. I'm gonna kind of pat it a little bit just so that while we're talking, it's not just dripping everywhere. Borax actually forms in the monoclinic crystal system, but for the most part, it makes what are called prismatic crystals. They're thicker, more blocky crystals rather than being flat and tabular. They're really awesome. Some of these are like water clear. They look like a piece of glass. Looks pretty awesome. So now that we've made our really complicated and probably overly complicated for me wire snowflake, we're gonna do something that's like a lot simpler. We're just gonna show you guys like what the crystals look like once they grow on pipe cleaners. So this will be a little mini ornament. Wonderful thing about pipe cleaners, they are forgiving. I mean, it's not 100% perfect, but it's pretty good for a teeny tiny little snowflake. So now we're going to mix in our borax. Try not to burn myself. I might have possibly over oversaturated it. Oh, you can see all the bubbles coming out of the fuzz. We're going to leave it overnight. We're just gonna leave it alone, not touch it, let it do its thing. This is about 24 hours since we made our little bitty snowflake. And um, so let's take a look at what happened. It actually kind of worked a little too well, if you know what I mean. So we now have a crystal flower rather than a snowflake, but it's still really pretty. I'm actually really surprised how many crystals grew. There's actually a huge one down here on the bottom, if you can see that. So I let this one run like overnight. So what I might do in the future is start it early in the morning and then check on it see like where a good stopping point is. We're gonna, we're gonna bring back this guy. So this crystal shape is actually fairly close to what a lot of feldspars will form at. When you turn them in the light, those terminations are actually really similar. So before we go, I just want you all to take a look at these two gorgeous ornaments. Just look at the ways that the different crystals arrange themselves. I just really like, honestly, the way that they catch the light and the way that they sparkle. So just remember to like, subscribe, and ring that bell. We have a lot of really cool, awesome videos coming down the pipeline. We've got some more crystal growing stuff. We've got you know more really exciting unboxings, and we would really enjoy it if you guys joined us. Thanks for watching.